Hi everyone. Today in this video, let us talk about the prostaglandins. Prostaglandins can be classified into different categories like prostaglandin D2, E2, I2, F2 and even PGG2 and PGH2. The last two are the cyclic endoperoxides and apart from these prostaglandins, we have other mediators like the thromboxane A2 which is again derived from the same pathway. And prostaglandins play an important role in our physiological system but therapeutically we can find three types of prostaglandin analogs. They are prostaglandin E analogs, prostaglandin F analogs and prostaglandin I analogs. So today in this video, let us discuss what are the different types of prostaglandins and how they are acting and what is their clinical use. Let us start with the prostaglandin E analogs. The first one is the mesoprostol. Mesoprostol is having a structure like this and here the prostaglandins can be classified based on what are the groups at the 9th and 11th position. So this is the group at the 9th position which is a keto group and 11th position is having the OH group. So 9 keto 11 hydroxy prostaglandin is nothing but the prostaglandin E series. So mesoprostol is a prostaglandin E1 analog. Now let us see how this drug acts. Normally the arachidonic acid is a C20 fatty acid which is going to be derived from the phospholipids by the action of the phospholipase A2. C20 fatty acid is responsible for the generation of so many types of mediators. This arachidonic acid can be converted into prostaglandins by one of the important pathway Cox pathway, cyclooxygenase pathway. And by this pathway, arachidonic acid can produce the prostaglandins as well as the thromboxane A2, which are producing the different types of physiological functions. During any inflammatory conditions, these prostaglandins are going to be synthesized, which are having few of the pathological roles. These prostaglandins can produce the pain, nociception, they can increase the fever, hyperthermia, as well as they can also induce the inflammation. So all these are the pathological roles of the prostaglandins. But at the same time, prostaglandins can also have some protective actions in the body. Particularly at the stomach, they are going to decrease the gastric acid secretion and increase the bicarbonate secretion and mucus secretion. There is an always sensitive balance between the gastric acid secretion and mucus and bicarbonate secretions. As the bicarbonate and mucus secretions are increased, gastric acid secretion can be controlled. So all these three actions are mediated by one of the important prostaglandin PGE2. Now, when we use few of the drugs like the NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, they can inhibit this COX pathway, thereby they can inhibit the sense of the prostaglandins. As the prostaglandins are not synthesized, NSAIDs can reduce the pain, fever, as well as the inflammation. But at the same time, they can also inhibit the sense of the protective prostaglandins like the PGE2, thereby they can increase the gastric acid secretion. That's why NSAIDs can induce the gastric ulcers. Then how we can treat these gastric ulcers? Because these ulcers are going to be produced due to the inhibition of the prostaglandin synthesis, we can give the drugs externally which are the prostaglandin E2 analogs such that they can decrease the gastric ulcers produced by NSAIDs. So here mesoprostol is one of the drug which already we have seen it is a prostaglandin E1 analog. It can have the dual action, it can increase the bicarbonate secretion as well as mucus secretion. At the same time, it can control the gastric acid secretion. Thereby, this mesoprostol can be used to treat the NSAID-induced gastric ulcers. Apart from this, mesoprostol is also having the other pharmacological actions. This drug can also increase the uterine contractions. That's why mesoprostol can be used to induce the labor. So, it is a uterine stimulant which can increase the uterine contractions. So, when this drug is given in the first trimester, it can increase the uterine contractions. Thereby, it can produce an abortion in the pregnant woman. And that's why mesoprostol is combined with another drug, mifepristone. Mifepristone is an antiprogestin. This combination can be used for the medical termination of the pregnancy. So, these are the three important uses of the mesoprostol for the treatment of NSAID-induced gastric ulcers, as well as for induction of labor at the third trimester and for medical termination of the pregnancy in the first trimester. That's why whenever this mesoprostol is indicated for the NSAID-induced gastric ulcers, 
this drug should not be given to the pregnant woman because it can increase the uterine contractions. Second drug is the Gemiprost. Gemiprost is having the structure like this. And again, you can see that 9th portion keto group is there and 11th portion OH group is there. So this drug is again a prostaglandin E1 analog and it is not having the free carboxylic acid. It is having an ester functionality at the first position. And again, this drug increases the uterine contractions. That's why this drug is a, again indicated for the medical termination of the pregnancy. So Gemiprost is a similar structure to the misoprostol, which is again having the same activity. It can be used for the medical termination of the pregnancy. Third one is the Dinoprostone. Dinoprostone is having a structure like this. Again, we can observe here, it's having the keto group at the ninth position and OH group at the 11th position. But if we carefully observe, it is having the free carboxylic acid. So Dinoprostone is directly a prostaglandin E2, which is having the free carboxylic acid at the terminal. And this drug again increases uterine contractions. That's why it can be used in the medical termination of the pregnancy. Fourth one is the Alprostadil. Alprostadil is having the structure like this. And here you can observe it's having the keto group at the ninth position and OH group at the 11th position. So Alprostadil is again a prostaglandin E1 analog. Now let us see how this drug acts. This drug, because it's a prostaglandin E1 analog, it can act on the EP receptors, the prostaglandin E receptors. Thereby, it can produce the relaxation of the smooth muscle and vasodilatation. So, this alprostadil can produce the relaxation of the trabecular smooth muscle at the erectile tissue, as well as it can also increase the vasodilatation of the cavernosal arteries. So, at the corpus cavernosum, the arteries are going to be dilated by alprostadil. Because of these two activities, Alprostadil can increase the erection of the erectile tissue. That's why this drug can be used in the treatment of erectile dysfunction. As well as this drug can also be used for the diagnosis of the erectile dysfunction. So when this drug is uh, used for the erectile dysfunction, it can produce few of the side effects like the prolonged erection of the penis and painful erection and penile fibrosis can also be observed. And this Alprostadil can also be used in the newborns who are suffering with the Patent ductus arteriosus. This is one of the condition where the ductus arteriosus is not closed after the birth, which results in the leak of the oxygenated blood from the left ventricles into the pulmonary circulation. And this backflow increases the pressure in the pulmonary system, which is not tolerated in the newborns. So in order to maintain this condition before the surgical correction, all prostadial can be given because this drug acts as a vasodilator, thereby it reduces the pulmonary pressure. Next one is the prostaglandin F analogs. One of the drug is the carboprost. Carboprost is having the structure like this. Now you can observe 9th position hydroxy group as well as 11th position hydroxy group. So 9-11 dihydroxy derivatives are the PGF2 analogs. So carboprost is a PGF2 alpha analog. Now let us see how this drug acts. Because this is a PGF2 alpha analog, it can act on the FP receptors, which are the receptors for the prostaglandin F2. Thereby, it can increase the myometrial contractions. Uterine contractions can be increased by, again, carboprost. That's why this drug can be used in the medical termination of the pregnancy, just like the other drugs we have seen, like mesoprostol, gemiprost, and dinoprostone, which are the prostaglandin E1 analogs. So here carboprost is a prostaglandin F2 analog which is again used for the medical termination of the pregnancy. But apart from this, this carboprost because it is going to increase the myometrial contractions, it can prevent the bleeding after the delivery. So it can produce hemostasis after the delivery. That's why this drug can be used in the postpartum hemorrhage. After the partum, the loss of bleeding can be controlled by carboprost because it can increase the myometrial contractions. And this drug can produce few of the side effects which are mainly related with the gastrointestinal system. So it can produce few of the side effects like the vomiting, diarrhea, as well as it can also produce a hyperthermia. A slight increase in the body temperature can be observed. Second one is the latinoprost. Latinoprost is having the structure like this and again you can observe it is having the OH group at the ninth position as well as another OH group at the 11th position. And we can also observe at the first position, it is forming an ester with the isopropyl group. 
and on the other terminal it is having a phenyl ring system so this is the latanoprost because it is having the 911 dihydroxy groups so latanoprost is again the prostaglandin f2 alpha analog similarly we have third drug travoprost travoprost is having structure like this again ninth position oh group and 11th position oh group so this structure is just similar to the latanoprost except the phenyl group is having a trifluoromethyl group on one terminal so travoprost is again the prostaglandin f2 alpha analog Fourth one is the bimatoprost, which is having the structure like this, and it is again having the 911 dihydroxy, but on one terminal it is having amide linkage. It is not having the ester or carboxylic acid. It is having an amide which is substituted with the ethyl group, and on the other terminal it is having the phenyl ring. So that is the bimatoprost, which is again the prostaglandin F2 alpha analog. Now we have three drugs, latanoprost, travoprost and bimatoprost. All these are the prostaglandin F2 alpha analogs with some structural similarity. So these drugs are acting on the FP receptors which are the receptors for the prostaglandin F2. Thereby they can increase the uveoscleral outflow which results in the increased excretion of the aqueous humor. When the aqueous humor is excreted, it can result in the decreased intraocular pressure. That's why these three drugs are used in the treatment of open angle glaucoma. And they can also be used to decrease the intraocular pressure associated with the ocular hypertension. So these are the two important indications of uh, these three drugs. All these three drugs are the prostaglandin F2 alpha analogs. What are the side effects? When these drugs are given, they can produce few other side effects which are related with the eye. So they can produce some blurred vision, burning sensation, as well as stinging and some increased pigmentation of the iris can also be observed with these uh, ophthalmic prostaglandins. Next one is the prostaglandin eye analogs. So one of the drug is the apoprostinol. Apoprostinol is having the structure like this and here it is not the complete of the structure. You can observe at the 11th position OH group is there but at the 9th position the OH group is not there, oxygen is there which is going to be connected to form a 5 member cyclic ring system. So in the apoprostinol, we can observe OH group only at the 11th position, but the 9th position is forming an ender ring system. So this apoprostinol is a prostaglandin I2 analog. Now let us see how this drug acts. Apoprostinol acts as a vasodilator. It produces a vasodilatation by increasing the cyclic AMP levels. As well as this drug can also inhibit the platelet aggregation. That's why this drug can be used in the treatment of pulmonary artery hypertension. It can reduce the pulmonary blood pressure because it is a vasodilator as well as it reduces the platelet aggregation. Then what are the side effects? Since this drug acts as a vasodilator, it produces the vasodilatory side effects. The important side effects are the flushing, the vasodilatory response and it can also produce some nausea and vomiting and hypotension, a reduction in the blood pressure can be observed with the apoprostinol. So that's about the different types of prostaglandins. So we have few of the prostaglandin analogs which are therapeutically useful. They can be classified into prostaglandin E analogs, F analogs and I analogs. Among the prostaglandin E analogs we have mesoprostol, gemiprost, dinoproston. All these three drugs can be used for the medical termination of the pregnancy. And mesoprostol can also be used for induction of the labor as well as it can also be used for the NSAID induced gastric ulcers. And another prostaglandin E analog is the alprostadil, which is increase the erection, thereby it can be used for the erectile dysfunction as well as for its diagnosis. And it can also be used for the maintenance of the patent ductus arteriosus in the newborns in order to prevent the pulmonary hypertension. Similarly, prostaglandin F2 analog is the carboprost which is used for the medical termination of the pregnancy as well as for postpartum hemorrhage, this drug can be used. Similarly, other prostaglandin F2 analogs like the latanoprost, travoprost and bimatoprost, all these drugs are used for the open angle glaucoma as well as in the ocular hypertension because they are going to reduce the intraocular pressure by increasing the excretion of the aqueous humor. Finally, prostaglandin I2 analog is the apoprostinol which is a vasodilator as well as antiplatelet agent. This drug is particularly used for the pulmonary artery hypertension.
And since this drug is a vasodilator, it can produce few other side effects like the flushing, hypotension, and nausea and vomiting. So that's about the prostaglandin analogs and their clinical uses. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.